So I'm not much of a music theory guy. I much more appreciate sound design and just making arrangements and stuff like that. And that's why I'm more into Psytrance than any other genre, because a lot of the time you're not really dealing with a lot of music theory. We tend to just make long sequences, which just stay in the same note, and all of our bass lines stay in the same note, and there's not a lot of music theory that you need to do. But sometimes you want something like a melodic arp, and in that case it might be helpful to have some music theory background that you can use for that. At least that is what I thought, until I made the rack that I'm going to show you in this video. The idea that I'm going to show you in this video will drastically help you just by randomly creating different melodies for you, which you can then combine yourself into new musical ideas. So if you find that interesting, let's have a look at that. Hello, I quickly wanted to say, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by listening to my music on Spotify or Apple Music, or by going to my website and looking at some of my products. There are even free ones that you can download uh, really easily. Alternatively, if you're interested in private lessons, I also provide those and all the information for that you can also find on my website. All right, so we're here in my project and as you can see, I have a serum and right now it's just an initialized preset loaded. Nothing has been done here. So we just have a saw wave. That serum is then triggered by this auto arp, which is the device that we're going to talk about today. I am going to show you exactly how you can make this device. If you just wanted to download it as a device and play with it yourself, you can do so by going to my Patreon. All three of the tiers will have access to this device. I'm just going to upload it to my Patreon and then you can get it right from there. So this is how it opens up if you load it. And if you just play it now, it's just going to play the same note over and over again. So I'm going to play a C. Let's do an octave higher, that's maybe better. And you can see it's not doing much. It's just taking that single C that I play and turning this it into 16 notes, which you can see is set right here. So there's three components here. This is the ARP, this is the velocity modifier, and then this is the actual key modifier, which changes the key that you're playing. And the way that it modifies the key right here is by this chance knob. So by upping the chance here, you get different keys. So with a 0% chance, it will always play the root note that you're playing. And if you turn it up, it will introduce more different keys depending on the percentage that you've set. With 100%, it will always play a different key. So to keep it in the scale, what I've done is I've actually used some scaling modifiers. That is the mini modifier that sits right here. Uh, the scale modifier and I've set up a few different modes that you can use which you can sh shift between here There's six different modes from zero to five and then you can also set the root key whatever you want and I'm playing for example F It will restrict the notes that it plays towards the F key and whatever mode you selected it finally there's this note control here which you can use to set how many notes you want to change to Finally, we have this velocity control, which allows you to modify the velocity of the note. Introduce some randomness if you want. So overall, a very versatile way of making arps. Obviously, you can also set the rate and the gate. The gate amount will determine how long the note is. So that's very useful. So now let's actually look at how you make this device. So I'm going to just open up the devices and there's two main things that we're going to look at. The first one is the random here. And then the second is this MIDI effects rack, which is determining whatever mode that you're in. As you can see, this effect rack is just shifting between the different modes here using the scale function here. And this is just all presets that you can drag in here. As you can see, what I'm doing is I have these six different channels and then it gives you six different scale options, right? And I've just used these different presets here, the major and the, the minor one right there. And then the, the way that you actually switch between them is using the chain selector. Each one has their own position on the chain selector. And then this is set to a macro, which is this one, which is then controlled by this macro here. So you can see it going up and down, right? Like that, just goes from zero to five here. And I just, sets this position which determines which of these modes is actually used. 
Also for each scale, we're setting the base key here, which is set by this macro for each one of them. So this knob is mapped to this macro, which in turn is mapped to this macro here, which as you can see, changes the base key that we're using. Now let's look at these two macros and how, what they are controlling. They are controlling the choices and the chance of this random here. And what the random does is it adds a certain note pitch towards the note that you're actually playing. So if I'm playing a C right here, I don't really know if I can show that nicely. Uh, maybe if I go here to the major. You can see these are the notes that are incoming. If I set it to, for example, just one note, it will always add one note. And if I turn it off, you can see it's lower, right? So this is the without it triggering. And if we trigger it, it's playing this one, which means that it's just adding one note to it. Now, if we go one and two, it can go from either this row or this row. And then this scale is just setting it to the right note in the scale. And the more you do, the higher it goes, obviously. Now we have the rate and the gate, which are controlling the actual arpeggio. You can set faster or slower rates. And you can also set the gate. So these are just one-on-one -on -one controlling these values here. Finally, after having generated the notes, we use this final velocity here, which is just doing the overall velocity. You can see this is controlling the actual velocity level. And then we have our random, which can add some randomness on each side of them. So just so you know, this random goes both up and down, right? So if you set this to 64 and we set this to halfway, it can set whatever note that we want. So right now this device is very, very cool to generate cool sequences continuously, randomly, but it's not very musical. There's no repeating into it. There's no controlled randomness, right? Like we can generate a sequence, but every time we play it again, it's going to generate a different sequence. And what we would like to have is a way that we can randomly generate these sequences. And then once we have found a sequence that we like, we might be able to modify it, but we can mainly just take that sequence and play it again and again. So let's take a look at how that is actually done. So say, for example, I want to play a D sharp. I'm going to make an arp in D sharp. I'm just going to make a MIDI clip and I'm going to set D sharp as my note. And let's go to an octave lower. So D sharp two for this example. And then I also need to set the key to D sharp two. So now I can go in here and I can select whatever mode that I want to use. Let's say that we want the Frisian mode here. Let's go to two. That should be the Frisian mode here. Let's just have a look. Yes, we can see that it's playing there. And now if we set the velocity up, we might want to set 16 notes. And we can say, okay, we want a range of 100 and we want about 50% of our notes to be different than the root note. So now you can see that we have a cool sequence that is just continuously randomly generating new sequences for us. If you now actually want to take a part of that sequence and store it so that we can replay it later on, what we can do is we can create a new MIDI track and we can take input from this first one here and let's just record some. Something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this MIDI clip here and I'm just going to stretch it out all the way, basically up until here. And now we can just assign this to this track, turn off the auto arp because we've already generated our arp and we can play with it. So you can see that it's continuously repeating the same thing, right? But still, this isn't very musical and it's not sounding very great. What we can do is we can take some of these, say that I like this bit. And for example, I like this part here. It sounds pretty cool. I'm going to place that down there. And maybe I want uh, these two notes here. Uh, let's do something like this. Let's place this here, actually. And 
I want this like that. And then maybe towards the end, I want something like this. You can zoom in to maybe have it right here. And I can play with however I want to set this up. So for example, uh, maybe that's a little bit boring having that many nodes there. We can find maybe a different one. Uh, let's take this section here, place this right there. And now by combining these little sections into a new musical idea, you get something like this. Now that's pretty cool. Let's duplicate it a few times and we can maybe use this final one to create a little bit of a different vibe here. So maybe right here for the, the fourth bar, we just wanted to go up a little bit more. So now we already have a very cool ARP sound. Now let's say that we like the notes that we have played, but we want to maybe do some more with randomization at this point. For example, let's say that we want our synth to react to velocity so that we have, for example, a filter that reacts to the velocity of the sound. What we can do is we can set the chance to zero. We can set this to 64, like so, and then set this to 64, which as you remember, will give us random velocities all around. And we can play with this. We can take our velocity, instead of having it at the volume, we can say, have a little bit of an acid sound, maybe something like this, just a little bit of a acid modulation, and then we use the velocity to set the actual position of the filter. Now that's sounding pretty cool, but the very cool thing that you can do with this now, and we can actually remove this again, because we don't know we need it, is if we go into the automation, we can play with this. Say that we want it to start off very high, so that it's just always open, and then it slowly becomes random. And then for this final part, the randomness goes down, and maybe this thing goes up again. Or maybe we want this to be a little bit lower, so that it doesn't hit the highest velocities right here. And then we get something like this. Maybe the, the highest randomness is a little bit too much. We turn that down a little bit. And we may turn this down as well. So now very quickly we have created a very cool way to create these cool ARPs. And you can basically do this however long you want. Whatever new ARP idea that you need, you can just drag on and do this process again. And it's very easy and you don't have to actually think about what you want to do with the ARP. You just have the computer make something for you. So that's what I wanted to show in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. I don't know if every DAW has a way to do this, but definitely for Ableton, this is a very easy way to just generate ARPs whenever you need it. Again, if you want this device just to play with it and you don't want to make it yourself, then you can do so by going to my Patreon. But that's going to be the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new, subscribe for more. You can even turn on the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you whenever I upload something. But that's going to be it for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.